Have you ever seen that movie Brick? Yes, I have. I think that that's a pretty that's cool all. movie. I like that. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, this again, this is Scott with George from ExperiencePoints.net. Yeah, I'm, I'm also I'm also here. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we had a had a quick weird thing happen with the stream, but we started it over again, so this should be good. All right. To recap, I'm playing Gunpoint. I'm not sure if I like it, and so I wanted George's second opinion on this. My opinion is that it's awesome, and you're wrong. I'm not. I want to be wrong. Okay. Do good. you pay attention to any of this stuff? I do, yeah. Is, are you not paying attention? That's your first problem. So my first problem is I feel like this story is really convoluted and not told very clearly. Oh, it is convoluted. That's why it's so good, though. I mean, that's intentional. I mean, there, I, there's definitely like a, a Yojimbo thing going on here where he's playing two sides off of each other, but I just feel like it's a bit clumsy. I, I think that uh, the humor aspect of this game is really funny. Like, some of the jokes that they make are just like making fun of the nonsensical reality that is this type of heist game mm -hmm. and it does get confusing but if you click over there where it says case notes it's a pretty easy to use like recap of what's been going on mm. i should do that more often then because i've just been kind of like you know going for it okay here i am so Brand i guess for, suited yes by the night very very sneaky so for people that haven't played too much of the game it's somewhat of an adventure game with like real-time action elements so like the cursor changes colors based on if enemies can see you or not so you'll see when this guy turns around it's red now so that means his line of sight is there i noticed you didn't call it a stealth game would you would you not classify it as such oh yeah i guess that's true i mean that's that's yeah you're right that's the completely that's completely correct. It's the obvious thing, too, that I just skipped over. So stealth game, because, I mean, you know, <laughs> if you get seen, you're basically dead, because it's one-hit kill. Yeah. Um, and the gimmick is, if you flick the mouse wheel, you go into this uh, kind of hacking mode where you can connect uh, pieces of equipment to other things in the environment. And as you can see, it says the motion detector will activate nothing, but if I click and drag it over here, the motion detector will activate a power socket. So theoretically, will this, will this electrocute him? Uh, you're going the wrong way. You gotta, you gotta move it. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. But, but they have to be timed. Right. Because it'll, it'll... So it just buzzed, but it wasn't standing there. Right. And so I need to make sure that this guy activates the motion sensor while this guy down here is right in front of the, uh, the outlet. Absolutely correct. Okay. So, that's how you do it. Or you could just open the door and just beat the living crap out of that guard. Yes. <laughs> um, but only he can use it, so I would have to have... I would have to connect this, and then have him open up that door. And then... Oh, yep. God! I got hit by the door. <laughs> <laughs> Can't stand too close to the door. <laughs> Which is an interesting way to show that... There's, I think this is probably the neatest part of the entire game. There's this like tiered autosave system. Yep, yep. Which so, yeah. just uh, I, I, one of the things that I like so much about stealth games is just it, it has they naturally have a really satisfying feedback loop if done correctly. Uh -huh. so it's a really simple step, right? It's plan, act, adapt. Right. Over and over and over. Again. Right. The cool thing about having the uh, different save games is that you can go back to which level of plan you're. Most right. of the time you're just spamming one, but occasionally you can go back at and go, okay, well I didn't totally mess things up, let's try this again. Right. Okay, so speaking of totally messing things up. Your, your mass is Oh jeez, go on, dodge jeez, das! That's it. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna pay attention this time. Oops, didn't pay attention. Uh, I knew that. That was close. You gotta pounce, you have to act, qu act quickly. It's a relatively fast game. Yeah, it is. So I'm gonna just uh, get rid of this guy. And then once you get here, you can turn on secondary uh, piece of technology. So now I can manipulate the blue colored stuff. Yep. So I think what I can do is connect this security camera to this door and when I activate it, it'll knock this guy over. Mm 
Hooray! <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Oh! Didn't see that. So I guess the the lesson here is to always be scrolling around the window, right? Yeah, because you could sort of free look around the level. Right. I mean, it, it, it doesn't allow you to really zoom out completely, which yeah. I think is smart, because you are for, again, plan act adapt, right? You have to act, figure out what went wrong, and then adapt accordingly. Okay. Um, that's super satisfying to me. One of the uh, one of the cool things that I was surprised by was that I heard it was a stealth game, but I didn't realize how in-depth the strategy was in terms of connecting things. Because uh -huh. really, the, the, the game is strongest when you are looking at a level, you make a bunch of connections ahead of time, and then you trigger one thing and everything just collapses in on itself in a yeah. good way or a bad way. Both, both outcomes can be a lot of fun. Yeah. So, I guess what I should do then is reroute this thing to the light switch. There we go. So now See, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of killing the lights because it causes hacking where the guards want to turn it back on again. Yeah. And having that level of predictability over them when, while you're in the dark is really satisfying. Yeah. So, let's see. Oh shoot. I forgot that the elevator dings and now this guy's turned this way. Professionals? Uh, you, the ones wearing body armor, you cannot attack them. Until, no. How about the suit and tie ones? I forget what those guys can do. Oh yeah, you can. Oh yeah, you can mess them up. Okay. You can mess them up real good. <laughs> so I want to activate this because I stupidly um, took the lift down, and the dinging of the button now alerted him to like take a look at the elevator. So now I'm I'm pretty much screwed. So I have to go in through the other way now. Well. If you acted real quick, you could probably pounce them from the elevator. Because when the elevator is down on the lower floor, you're still in the elevator. Yeah. You, you don't actually leave it until you move, so he can't see you. Okay. Let's see. What you might want to do is oh. tie the power to the power gizmo. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think I, I think that's a good idea. So. Uh, this is oh, a like yellow guy. Can't, huh? yeah. So, yeah. So I think I need to go through here. But in order to do that, I need to activate this green. And I also need to, like, mess this guy up now. So later on in the game, you can unlock a gun. I, I know. I messed around with the gun, and I didn't buy it because I didn't have enough money at the time. But I really want to buy it because I feel like that would be useful. Yeah, there's a couple of really cool abilities. The gun is kind of neat. I didn't play with it until the very end because I didn't want it to become a sort of shooter stealth game. Yeah. And when you get it, it's... That's really not at all what it is. You've got, you know, limited ammunition because whenever you use a cool ability, you're, you just sort of run out. Um, but you can stick people up. Right. The cool thing is, once you stick someone up, that's not that's not the end of it because you don't necessarily have to kill them. You could, you know, there's all sorts of cool stuff you can do in terms of moving them around, things like that. Um, so I appreciate the gun a lot. I also really oh. dig. Uh, <laughs> at one point, you can tie you can tie uh, items in the game to someone's gun. So when they shoot you, something else happens. Mm -hmm. So you can make it so that when they fire on you, the electricity goes out. Right. And all of a sudden, you're bathed in darkness. And that sets up some really cool moments when you can burst through a window, they spot you, but you find the head, set it up so that it kills the lights, and then you tackle them and you find them. Okay. Oh, crap. This guy just this guy just now can go through this. Oh gosh, I forgot the body armor guys can't be hurt. That's fine. Okay, so now I can do this. I'm gonna distract this guy with the elevator. 
So what is it that you think you don't like about this game? Um, I feel like visually, it's hard to parse things. Oh, really? Uh, like these doors God, always seem really skinny to me. Oh. <laughs> you know, I mean, like, it's hard uh, to tell that this is a door. You know what I mean? Like, it, it's so, like... Well, I mean, there's there's always a keypad next to a door. Yeah, I guess that's a good point. It's just, I don't know, something visually, like... And this sounds, I don't know, this sounds really dumb, but everything is so small in this game. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Your major problem is you're zoomed out too much. Is that... That's yeah, I mean, issue? essentially, yes. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're zoomed out to a pretty extreme degree, and I'm not sure what the reasoning is behind that. I mean, this is the classic, classic battle of stealth design. You're yeah. Always wrestling with information. Like, how do you express it? How do you show it on the screen? How do you give people and arm people with information but not overpower them? Like, yeah. It's, it's constant. So, I get that. I, you know, I could see that being a problem. I, I think it's just a cost. It's a cost-benefit calculation for the designers in this case because they want you to be able to have a large-scale view of the entire map, not only to do the sort of interconnecting that you're doing, mm -hmm. but also to just give you the sense that um, you can go and move and flow between locations in in quick succession. Yeah. This is, I think, the type of thing where you can go through here and have speed runs and just have it be like remarkably fast. Yeah, yeah. But you need to be able to see the whole shebang in order for that to happen. Yeah, it's, it's, I was trying to, you know, that same thing that you were talking about, like I was trying to figure out if there was a solution to it, because I really, I, the, the weird thing, the thing that actually got me thinking about this was that I felt the same way about Monaco. Like, I feel like Monaco is zoomed out and abstract to the point of being inscrutable. Or not inscrutable, yeah, but like difficultly, than, you know. So it's like, Monaco is a similar thing where it's like, is that a door or is that a wall? Is that a coin or is that just a piece of the ground that kind of is shaped like a coin? Alright, let's do one more. Let's do one more mission. Sure. Your mouse is freaking out again, though. It is. Maybe we should cut it then. Hold on. Okay, so here's the, th here's the thing. Because the mouse is freaking out, and that's probably really annoying to people. I'll do this mission <laughs> really quickly. Okay. Ah, oh, see. Okay. One. One of the things I like about the game too is that uh, it's so self-aware. Like all of the humor and all of the conversations are aware not only of the sort of noir genre and making fun of it, mm -hmm. but also just game genre. Like there are certain aspects of it that are so gamey in the way that he responds to things that it's just it. I don't know. It, it makes me laugh. I like it. I mean, the guy. What's his name, George? I forget. He's a he's a writer. He's done a lot of reviews as well. A writer who does a lot of reviews. He's the guy who made this game. Uh, oh. He was a games writer for a long time, and this is his first game that he's ever made. Which is super depressing, because that means he's extremely talented. <laughs> uh, Tom Francis. Yes, Tom Francis, exactly. Yeah, he writes for a PC Gamer. Yep. Um, in the UK. I mean, it's impressive because, like, like you were saying, it's really... It's very well written, and it's very, um, it's aware of like the kind of stuff you do in this type of video game. But it's also smarter yeah. than a lot of the other things that you would generally do in this type of video game. Oh god. <laughs> yeah, you know, and we should also say like this doesn't come into our conversation all that often, but the game's cheap. It's what like nine bucks, ten yep. bucks, I think. Yeah, I think it was nine dollars. For the value that you get, I think. It's, it's well worth it. It's, it's not a particularly... Uh, I, I don't know. I, I, I know you're saying it's somewhat hard to read. I think it's a relatively accessible first stealth game. Like, you can hop in and play, and I think that the, the difficulty curve is, is relatively gentle hmm. as the game progresses as well. Yeah. Uh, it's not overloaded or overburdened with a ton of features, you know? There's no smoke grenades. There's no, you know, like, caltrops. There's not a whole lot of, like, bogged down crap. It's just a sort of clean stealth game and I think that I really appreciate that. But I mean I think it would have benefited from a little bit more description of that sort of stuff, you know? Like there are items yeah, what, in it. Of what it does have. Yeah. Yeah. I mean you can there, there, for all of the items uh, you can actually test it out. Yeah, that was nice. With it in a safe environment. Yeah. And so that's I mean that's a good inclusion. It doesn't force you in a tutorial but I, I think that's just partly the I don't know modern game design uh, 
philosophy these days, right? Yeah. Like they don't want to waste time. They want to just put you in the game right off the bat. Yeah. Um, for a game that's a little bit less readable than, you know, a lot of your average games, you probably could have used a little bit more description. All right. I think even something as simple as like a hover box, but there is a piece of text, right? Like when you make a connection, it'll say, when this light switch activates, it will open this door. Yeah. So I can't get further down. I need to open this thing up, which means I need a blue thing. Which means I need to get But like the here. sound detector. The sound detector tells you what it does, but it's not terribly descriptive. It took me a while to understand that. I can call an elevator, and when it dings on that door, it will set off the, the right. movement or noise detector, which right. will then trigger other things. Because for a while, I was just trying to like run around, and it wasn't really working. And then eventually, I was able to patch together pretty complex systems of triggers. Yeah. All right. This is not going to be a fast one, but... <laughs> <laughs> I think this is like a general gist of like what the game does and what it's like and like again like I'm just trying to like overcome this weird hurdle of a kind of the social pressure of trying to like one of these games that it feels like I should probably like and b thinking about like what things look like visually because you know like take a take a game like Mark of the Ninja that communicates everything very visually instead of having to read everything like, I think maybe that's also kind of part of the shock. Like, Mark of the Ninja, it's very clear, like, what is a grate, what is a door? You know, the, like, the visual language is much more, like, apparent. Like, this door is very thin and weird, and it kind of looks like the texture of the wall itself. And so it's, I'm kind of fighting with the actual look of it, as shallow as that sounds, you know? Yeah, no, I totally understand. I, I mean, I wonder if it's a, I don't know, if it's a thing where... I don't know, I mean, because I feel like you and I play a lot of the same games, so I feel like you and I generally have the same history. Yeah. Um, but it's interesting when we think about, you know, there are some things that you really like and some things that I don't, right? Like yeah. Dark Souls is not my thing. Yeah. We know that. And there are other games that I think are definitely your thing. Yeah. But we've had conversations before about uh, these types of games. I don't know, what what was the last game I, I tried to get you to like? I don't think you responded to it well. Uh... Do you recall? Was it? Maybe it was Monaco. Oh, it was Monaco. Yeah, it yeah. was Monaco. And it's just, it's interesting because I don't necessarily think that this and Monaco are my type of game. Yeah. But I love these games. Like, I really enjoy both of these games a lot. So it's interesting to see you not liking them. And I don't know. I, I'm trying to get, I guess I'm trying to understand like, is there something about your particular play style, your particular play history that makes these games hard to like as opposed to my particular play style or my particular play history? Yeah. It could be. I just have to. Because I think it's, I mean, I think for anyone, whenever you're playing a game, it's a really good idea to try to figure out why is it that you don't like it? Because sometimes people will have a visceral reaction or, or a natural dislike for a certain experience yeah. and not know why. And yeah. I think that the more that you know why, the better you will be in terms of critically uh, analyzing whatever game you happen to be playing, the better you'll be at picking out games that you'll actually like, spending yep. money on games that you like, and the better you'll be at just like understanding uh, game design and how design works and how it should work or shouldn't work. Yeah. I'm so close to doing this. <laughs> if I do this, it'll open the door, and then I'll get down here. Sounds like a plan, right? Do it. The other cool thing too is sometimes um, one of the things I like about that feedback loop of, of plan, act, adapt is occasionally you'll stumble on situations where you'll over plan and mm -hmm. just have like try forcing it. You're like, There's got to be a way. I gotta you know like make the light switch and turn this thing off and then the thing off and you're like, oh, I could just I could just go down the stairs. Okay. <laughs> that makes, that makes yeah. Ah, uh, I was. Oh, over this one. Yeah, this one took me a while. I, this is a fun design one though. I like this one a lot. I was over somewhat time, time sensitive. Yeah. Oh gosh. You know, in some of the later levels, and I, it might only be the final level, but um, there's no quick restart. Mm -hmm. When you die, you have to go all the way back to like a, a significant point. There's only like a couple checkpoints, as opposed to this one where there's quite a few checkpoints. Yeah, but I think I'm. I think I'm good. Once I let this guy walk out. It's the armored guys you can't pounce on. Oh, crap, what is 
close the door? Okay, whatever. This is going to take forever because I, I need to rewire this whole thing. <laughs> Ugh, okay. Well, thanks for suffering through this. Maybe it's just because I'm 